everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome my name is Jen and I have an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis and I've had it for seven years now I discovered medical medium thyroid healing two years ago and I did film an update when I'd been doing it for about 10 months which I will link over here today I wanted to do another update on how things are going two years in have I experienced healing have I continued to see improvements and would I still recommend the medical medium book thyroid healing and the protocols laid out therein so if you've watched my 10 month update you'll know in there that I mentioned certain supplements that I was taking I'm still for the most part taking those supplements and after a while I would kind of thought are they really working or doing anything or is it just I don't know, have, has my body just got used to it? So I stopped taking them or some of them kind of as they ran out, I didn't replace them and I definitely felt a difference. So I immediately went back to taking them again. The other changes I've kept is I have still eliminated pork, although I do eat it on occasion. Because I have such a limited diet and I can't eat potatoes and grains and gluten and dairy and all these things which was true of me before I began the medical medium protocol anyway when I go out to a restaurant very often I'm finding the meal that is served with sweet potatoes is very often like a pork belly or something like that so I will have it occasionally kind of as a treat sometimes I'll have a bit of ham or a bit of bacon but for the most part I don't eat pork like I won't cook pork at home I also no longer eat eggs although again occasionally I will have an egg in like a paleo roll recipe or something or in mayonnaise I do eat mayonnaise that is my one true weakness it is my cheese methadone and I know this egg in there and I know you can get vegan mayonnaises I've tried many different ones and I despise them all I refuse to give up my best foods mayonnaise so be it the other thing I've changed is while I do have celery juice most days, I don't have it every single morning. So I'll buy two or three bunches of celery when I do my weekly grocery shop and sometimes that will last a week and sometimes that will last two or three days. It depends on kind of how juicy the celery is and I no longer freeze my celery juice. So in my 10 month updates, I mentioned that I was washing, cutting up and juicing my celery once a week and freezing it in portions. I had since then watched an interview of Anthony William by somebody else and in it he says you're not going to be getting the full benefits of celery juice if you do it that way. It's better than nothing but you're not going to get all of the benefits and obviously if I'm going to the trouble and expense of buying celery and juicing it I want to get all of the benefits so now I juice it fresh on the mornings that I have it. I'm going to go through the list of things that I mentioned the positive changes I'd experienced in my 10 month update and let you know how I'm doing with those things if I've continued to see an improvement if those improvements disappeared or if I've kind of stayed the same so the first thing I mentioned was fluid swelling and that my fluid swelling had kind of all gone away I no longer really notice fluid swelling except when I'm not celery juicing again celery juice is one of those things that I thought is this really doing anything and I stopped for a while and I definitely felt and saw a difference um, not just with the fluid swelling but overall so that's why I went back to drinking celery juice so yes fluid swelling has improved and I notice a difference when I don't drink the celery juice I think it's very important and it does help second thing was I had lost weight okay um, I also talked about hormones that I had had fluctuating hormones and my estrogen was dropping and then when I did the celery juice and the supplements it went up and it was great this is a case of correlation does not equal causality this was purely coincidental so when I first became ill which was in 2013 I developed Hashimoto's as a result of severe adrenal fatigue and at the same time it triggered perimenopause so now it's seven years later and I'm getting to the business end of menopause and my estrogen is plummeting and yeah things are a bit haywire my hormones are up and down so that is why my hormones were high and then they were low it wasn't actually due to the medical medium protocol it just happened to rise when i did the protocol maybe it had an effect i don't know but overall my hormones are very up and down and rocky and the weight gain comes along with that as well so I am still taking progesterone I take a bioidentical progesterone and a progesterone cream 
and I'm now also on half of the lowest dose of an estrogen patch. So that addresses the hormones that I mentioned, that also addresses the weight gain. I have been gaining weight, it is probably linked to the estrogen, I don't know, we're still figuring it out. Unfortunately, the medical medium protocol is not helping me with my weight issues. I also did want to mention that I have added in new supplements. I am now taking Evening Primrose Oil, Vitex or Chaseberry, Don Quay and Black Cohosh and that is for hormonal reasons and I find that they really do help. Okay, the next thing I mentioned was my thyroid not being sensitive like to the touch and it hasn't been. Ever since I started the medical medium protocol two years ago, I have not had problems with my thyroid being overactive and kind of getting out of control and being painful or sensitive to the touch. So that's still good. The next thing I mentioned was that kind of background static of emotions and anxiety and that that had lifted. For the most part, it's been okay. I would say it's kind of come back, especially if I don't get enough sleep. It hasn't just like cleared up and gone away forever. But I do have a history with depression and anxiety, so I don't know, maybe that was too much to expect that that would completely go away. Maybe all of these things would be better if I was being super strict and like never ever eating pork and not touching eggs and all those kind of things. But I had to do the medical medium protocol in a way that was sustainable for me. I wasn't going to be doing like super strict things that like I'm not going to never touch another egg for the rest of my life. I know myself and... That's just not sustainable for me. Maybe it is for you, that's great. But I knew I had to be a little bit moderate or a little bit more flexible and accepted that my healing would probably take longer and that's okay. So these are my results so far and I'm so happy with them. But maybe my results would be better if I was being stricter but I'm really happy with the way things are going. So anyway, that's, that's on that. The next thing was more energy. Definitely, overall, I still have more energy. I feel more well, so that's good. Vivid dreams. I do dream fairly vividly most nights, and it's not just like, wow, that dream was weird. Like, wonder what that's about. I actually feel like they're doing something. I actually feel like they are quite healing, and they are sorting things through in my head. I know that sounds weird, but they feel productive, these like strange, vivid dreams I have. So I'd say that's a good thing. The next thing I mentioned was palpitations, that I was experiencing palpitations where sometimes my heart would just like thump really hard and it would feel like it was like squeezing sludge through. I still get that sometimes, especially if I've been off celery juice for a while and then I go back on it. And it's, it's almost like it's doing like a detox or like a, a healing. So sometimes I still get that, but it doesn't feel like scary or bad. <laughs> How can they not feel bad? Your heart's like pounding, but it, it's yeah, I just think it's interesting It just feels to me like okay, this celery juice whatever is doing something. Okay, the next thing I mentioned was sleeping well So my sleep was very good for a while and then I started using a magnesium mousse on my feet and I was sleeping Amazingly like the best I've ever slept in my entire life. It was fantastic Sadly, my sleep has declined again and I'm still sleeping poorly and sometimes struggling to get to sleep, sometimes waking up in the most nights, waking up in the early hours and unable to get back to sleep. I suspect it's probably all hormonal. Despite the replacement hormones I'm on, I think it's linked to that. We are currently in lockdown for COVID-19, so that's slightly strange and stressful and I think that's also affecting my sleep. So. No, medical medium wasn't the answer to my sleep problems, but I mean, it helped initially and I think it has helped my overall health overall, so I still think it's a good thing. So the next one I mentioned is foggy brain and overall that is mostly gone. I feel clear, I feel like I can think properly and I don't have that kind of fog. All of these symptoms I'm saying overall for the most part because with any healing journey you're going to have ups and downs. I've done a whole video on healing and things I've learned from it which I will link over here but yeah for the most part I'm going in the right direction definitely and I feel clear-minded and I don't have that brain fog next one I mentioned was hormones I've already addressed that and then ocular migraines I almost never have ocular migraines if I do it's again because I've been off the celery juice and all the supplements haven't been taking them and have gone back on again so I do think it's kind of like a part of the healing thing or like a detox thing but yeah I haven't had an ocular migraine in 
absolutely ages. Okay, the next thing is I talked about how my blood tests were looking better and medication had been reduced. So here's the thing, my blood tests are still looking better and in the Department of Medication, Anthony William claims that you shouldn't need to be taking any thyroid medication at all. Mainstream medicine says if you have Hashimoto's, you are going to be on medication for the rest of your life. So, I don't know, when I first read his book and he said, you shouldn't be taking any thyroid meds, I was like, I can't not because when I don't take them, life is pretty much a living hell. So I've still continued on my medication. However, I was taking 150 milligrams of a like bioidentical thyroid extract plus I was taking T3 twice a day. I am now down to 30 milligrams of the thyroid extract and no T3. And this has like blown my mind. I've, I've had to reduce my medication, reduce my medication along the way. At times I was getting kind of symptoms that I knew I was being over medicated and that my dose was too high and feeling kind of hyperthyroid and I knew I had to reduce it. I've worked with my doctor obviously in this. I also work with a kinesiologist. My kinesiologist is amazing and she can literally ask my body what do you need or what is the correct dose. So between the two of them and my doctor fully supports this by the way, I'm now like I said I've gone from 150 milligrams to 30 milligrams and when I had the latest dose reduction for the first time I actually began to believe that maybe I'm actually going to be medication free at some point like I didn't actually believe it until then but with that latest dose reduction which was maybe two months ago now I was like if I keep reducing this this is going to go away eventually and I can't even describe how it feels like it's just amazing to me and it's just confirmation as well that all the things I'm doing the way I fight for my health every day and it's not just the medical medium protocol and supplements it's exercise it's protecting my sleep it's eating a correct diet it was just so validating and hope giving to know that those things are making a difference and they're working now I have been asked multiple times to share my blood test levels with you guys and to say like what were your TSH levels what were your free T3 levels whatever the reason I don't do that is because your numbers don't actually give you a picture of your thyroid health I know mainstream medicine will tell you it does Anthony Williams tells you it doesn't and my experience tells you it doesn't and everybody is different everybody eats differently everybody lives differently everybody's body is different and I can tell you my levels and they might be identical to your levels but our health picture and how we feel might look very different so they're kind of irrelevant my T4 I will say has been low like below the normal range for at least a year probably longer and at one point my doctor did actually switch me to a different medication it was great at first but then it wasn't great and I went back onto my usual one and it didn't make a difference to my T4 levels so we have experimented with I think it was levothyroxine that she put me on we have experimented with different things for me I just have a low T4 number which just means that my stored levels of thyroid hormone are low I think anyway point being numbers don't really tell you everything about thyroid disease it's just a tiny part of the puzzle and yes some of my numbers have been good my t4 remains low overall they actually don't matter the numbers actually don't matter all that much it's how i feel it's how i'm responding to my medication it's all of the symptoms and things are they going away am i healing am i is my life looking better am i feeling better that's what actually matters more than the numbers the numbers are just kind of a part of the puzzle so that's why I don't share my numbers online. Okay, the next one is building muscle with exercise and feeling strong and fit when I actually do work out. So I agree that this is still true. There were a few months where I kind of stopped working out. Things were going crazy with my life. We had visitors and it was just one thing after another. And I kind of stopped working out regularly, but I'm back to exercising every single day. And I do feel like the exercise I do is strengthening my body and I'm able to build muscle, which like I mentioned in my 10 month update, before I started the medical medium protocol, 
that wasn't true. I just felt like I could exercise and work out and it wasn't really making a difference and I wasn't getting stronger and I couldn't really build muscle. And yeah, so that is an improvement that has continued when I do actually work out. And then the next thing I mentioned was hair regrowth. I had mentioned that I hadn't even realized I've been losing so much hair because my hair's really, really thick, but I'd noticed lots of like baby hairs, like regrowing. My hair's still really thick and strong and I haven't really noticed all those like baby hairs regrowing, but I also haven't noticed a huge amount of hair loss. So I guess an improvement, like it's better than losing hair all of the time, but yeah, I guess those baby hairs that we're growing in have all kind of caught up now and I'm not noticing a resurgence of them, which is good because that would mean I had been losing hair and then stopped losing hair and then started growing it again. So yeah, my hair's just been fine. So overall, like I said, it's been two years. What are my thoughts on the medical medium protocol? Do I still believe in it? Would I recommend it? Obviously I would, I'm still doing it myself. I have felt so much improvement. This has given me so much hope and I just, I cannot be more grateful that I discovered this. It has literally changed my life. I am continuing to take the supplements. I'm continuing to drink celery juice, continuing to avoid pork for the most part and eggs for the most part. I had already cut out dairy and gluten. And yeah, it's just a lifestyle for me now. And I'm so grateful for the healing that I've experienced and for the hope that I have that I won't be on thyroid medication forever. This has truly been life-changing and I would highly, highly recommend that you check out thyroid healing if you have thyroid disease of any kind, if your thyroid has been removed surgically, whatever your thyroid issue is, definitely check out thyroid healing. If you have any chronic illness or any autoimmune disease, please check out Anthony Williams' books. This isn't just for thyroid. There's an underlying cause that he talks about that actually causes all autoimmune diseases and most chronic illness so definitely check out his books if you're not into like mediums and that kind of stuff just overlook that just look at the information the protocols the supplements the dietary changes give it a try because what do you have to lose just give it a go and see if it can change your life the way it's changed mine i hope you found this helpful and all interesting thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one